Have you ever heard of the saying that cash is king? Well, right now, while we're in the midst of a stock market crash in April of 2020, this saying rings true. And today we're going to be discussing how much cash should we actually keep in our portfolios? I'm gonna be laying out a cash strategy that I'm gonna be carrying forward as I go on investing in my Wealth Simple Trade portfolio. So let me lay it out for you in this video. Welcome back to the Fire Grind. My name is Daniel, and on this channel, we talk about everything and anything that has to do with personal finance, especially how you and I can become financially independent and retire early. So as I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about how much cash should we actually hold in our stock portfolios? However, this answer really lies in the fact of where we are in the stock market cycle. So first, I'm gonna be laying out how much cash we should have in our portfolios in different stages of the stock market cycle. Then I'll be laying out how you can determine at what stage are we in the stock market cycle based off of stats of the S&P 500. And finally, to finish off, I'll be going over my portfolio and how it's been doing in the past week or so. So we have a lot to unpack today and let's get right into it. For those of you who do not know what the stock market cycle is, here's a chart that I'm gonna throw up on the screen so that you can understand it. In these stages of the stock market cycle, they're basically determined by what the investor sentiment is in the market, or essentially what the investor is feeling towards the stock market. So if we start on the left over here, we start off with the stages of optimism and enthusiasm. And while we're in this stage of the stock market cycle, I personally will be holding 10% cash. And I believe this is a great cash position to have because the market is fairly valued and the investor sentiment is trending towards the positive side. Now, as we move on to the next section of exuberance and euphoria, this is when the stock market gets a little bit overvalued and could trend upwards such that the stock market is in general extremely overvalued. And at this point, I would be building my cash position such that 40% in cash, waiting for the next stage of the cycle to happen. People are getting greedy here and they're buying stocks without regards for valuation typically. Now the third stage of the market is when the market starts to downturn a bit. We hit anxiety, denial, and fear. And at this point, I would lower my cash position to 30% because I'd be taking that 10% and putting it into the market because we don't know what's happening in the market, whether it's gonna be a small correction or if it's going to continue downtrending towards an actual recession. So here, what we're doing is averaging in to a market that is starting to fall. So if the market continues to downtrend into despair and panic, at this point, I would bring my cash position from 30% down to 20%. So with that 10% of cash, I'd be investing it into good value companies because at this point, a lot of the companies in the stock market would have had their valuations lowered by a significant amount and they'd be either fair valued or undervalued companies. And we know that since the stock market goes through cycles, eventually the market will recover. And if it doesn't, then the end of the world is probably coming anyway. So what does it matter if we have money or not? If the market really tanks and continues to go into catapultation, discouragement and dismay. At this point, my cash position would probably fluctuate between five to 10% because there are a lot of great deals in the stock market. Stocks might have fallen 40, 50, 60%. And these are some solid companies that have come down that far. At this point, we'd be picking very good companies that have strong balance sheets in order to weather the recession because we know if we look at the history, they will eventually come out of it and rise up on top and your gains will be astronomical. And as always, the market has always recovered into the hope and relief part of the stock market cycle. And here I'd be holding roughly 10% cash because I will continue buying stocks as they are fairly undervalued. And also the economy is recovering. So I know that there's going to be a huge lift in the stock market because this is based off of previous data. And like I mentioned in a previous video that I'm gonna link up here, once the stock market has dropped 30%, history shows in one year later, the stock market has recovered from that point. And if you study the 2000 or 2008 stock market crash, the market goes up significantly from here. So for this reason, that's why I would only hold 10% in cash because my money is better off deployed into equities rather than waiting for another drop in the market. Now with all this said, outside of my stock portfolio, I will be holding some cash to cover enough expenses for six months. And this is because in a stock market crash or a recession, people typically lose their jobs and there's a high risk that I could also lose my job. It's always good to have at least six months worth of expenses saved up in case you do lose your job. And in that event, I'm not forced to sell any of my stocks to cover my day-to-day -day expenses. Rather, I have a pot of money on the side that I've put aside as a rainy day fund in case I do lose my job. And that should be able to tie me over until I find my next job. 
So taking a little breather from all this information overload, if you haven't signed up for Wellsimple yet, go down below in the description and click that link. You can receive $5 for free once you make your account and deposit $100 and make $100 in trades. That's $5 for free. Essentially, you're taking $100 and getting 5% instantly on that. What better deal is there than that? Now back to the main content. So how do we determine where we are in the stock market cycle? Well, first you have to understand that the stock market's price is based on investors' prediction of where the economy is going. And essentially the price is determined by how much the next investor is willing to pay for a piece of the market. If he believes the market is gonna continue rising, he's gonna bid up the price and pay a bit more than the current market value. But if there's negative sentiment in the market, he's not gonna be willing to pay the fair market value, but he's gonna bid down the price. So here are three tips as to how we can determine the current investor sentiment and figure out where we are on the stock market cycle chart. The first big thing that we have to do is look at news outlets, social media, and even talk to friends and family. News outlets are the biggest things right now because there are professionals who are writing about their opinions on the stock market, and a lot of people listen to these professionals as they probably have a university degree and lots of experience on the stock market. So the audience for news articles range from young to old. And typically people will be investing based on the general sentiment behind these news articles. We can also look to social media, and this has started to become a larger component in how it affects the stock market. The great thing about social media is that people are able to share their opinions and there's a community behind them who will give their opinion back on what the creator is saying. So there's a lot of community interaction and you can actually get a wider scope of what the overall market is feeling as you can hear from different voices and what their opinions are. And lastly, if we go to our friends and family, this is a great local source as to how people might be thinking about the market. If all of a sudden friends that you have that have never invested are starting to get invested in the market because they heard their other friend made 20%, you can kind of tell that we're probably in the euphoria stages of the market. When money comes quickly, there's gonna be a lot of people jumping onto it and they're just gonna bid up the price because they actually have no idea what's going on in the stock market. They just see it as a way to make money. And usually this is how the market ends up crashing. The second tip I have is a bit more analytical, and we can look at the P-E ratio of the overall market to determine where we are in the stock market cycle. Typically, the average P-E ratio, the S&P 500, will range anywhere from 10 to 20. Now, if we drop below 10, then we're probably in the down trough of the stock market cycle, maybe in the recession periods, where there's discouragement and dismay. If we're between 10 and 20, we're either on a downward trend of fear, despair, and panic, or we're in the optimism and enthusiasm stage of the stock market cycle. And you can determine this based on what's been happening previously. Lastly, if we've moved beyond 20 as a P-E ratio into maybe 25 or 30, this is where the market starts to become overvalued. And people are starting to lose sight as to how we properly value companies because there's no way regular average companies can grow at 20 to 30% year over year. The third tip I have for you is to look into different world events that are happening. Macroeconomic events can have significant impact on the stock market. Like we see when Trump started his trade wars, there's a huge decline in the stock market in December of 2018. And same thing with the recent beer sickness that's happened. And people can theorize about how these world events will impact the stock market. And you just have to use your good judgment as to how likely you think these events will happen. If you think it's relatively unlikely and there's just over excessive fear in the market, this is maybe a great time to start buying as people are selling off. And here's a bonus tip for you guys. Look at some well-trusted investors in the market, like Warren Buffett, for example. We saw that in the beginning of 2020, Warren Buffett had his largest cash position. He was holding $122 billion in cash for Berkshire Hathaway. That's a quarter of his company's valuation in cash. And there must be a reason behind this, because he probably knew that we're in the late stages of the economic cycle, and it didn't make sense for him to deploy his hard-earned cash into the market when there was probably some sort of event coming up. So now we're gonna relate the past 13 years and place it on the stock market cycle chart to see how it all lines up. So from 2007 to 2009, we actually went from euphoria all the way down to discouragement and dismay. And this started to happen as the housing market started to crash. And in the beginning, there was anxiety, denial, and fear as people were seeing some people default on their mortgages. However, as this problem became more apparent and even banks and other industries were starting to shut down, then we moved into the fear, despair, panic, and eventually into discouragement and dismay as the economy was down in shambles. We even had large banks close down, like the Lehman Brothers. But if you look at the charts, we didn't stay here for very long. As people started to pull their money out of the market as the market crashed, there's a lot of cash sitting on the sidelines. And once the market crashed by 50%, this is when those people who took their money out in the beginning started deploying their capital because they saw the market was heavily undervalued and the economy would eventually recover. So they started to deploy their capital 
into the market, hoping that in the next few years it will recover. And like always, the stock market cycle doesn't fail. The economy recovered from 2009 to 2013, where in 2013, it was at the same levels as 2007. Now, if we move from 2013 to 2016, we can see the market trended up fairly steadily, but it wasn't trending up too rapidly. And here I think investors were still a little cautious from the stock market crash in 2008. And they weren't boosting valuations of companies, and companies were still recovering from that. So in this period, the stock market was going up roughly 10% a year. And this may sound like it's at the top end of the average growth, but if you're looking at it from 2007 to 2013, where we've only gained 30%, this is fairly average value because from that time of 2007 to 2013, people continued to create value in society and continue to build new products and improve our lifestyle. And more wealth was created, even though the economy went down into shambles. So as time moved on from 2016 to 2019, we had Trump get elected in late 2016. And here I thought the stock market was surely gonna crash because what is a celebrity businessman who has no sympathy for other people going to do to a country? He's probably just gonna fire everybody. So I thought the economy would actually have some sort of downturn. However, this was not the case. And we actually went into a period of exuberance and euphoria. From 2016 to 2019, the stock market rose about 62%. And this is pretty insane for three years. That's 20% year over year. Investors overlooked the idea that interest rates were low and that the government was continuing to rack up debt but all they saw that companies would continue to beat on their quarterly goals and their yearly goals, and their businesses would continue to grow 30, 40%. But well, this is only because they were able to borrow money at an extremely cheap cost of maybe one to 2% of interest per year. And where it became ludicrous is that companies were actually borrowing money in order to buy back their stock because they thought it was cheap, even though the stock has probably run up 30, 40% already from 2016. When companies start to do share buybacks, and they're very irresponsible with the finances by borrowing money in order to buy back their own stock. This is where I see we're in a period of euphoria. And if this beer sickness didn't hit, I think we could have kept them trending upwards a bit more. However, we can see that a lot of companies are suffering because they have very little cash position and the debt levels are super high. So right now we're facing a lot of layoffs and companies are unable to support their employees and keep them on payroll in this time. So now moving into my stock market portfolio. We can see over the past week, my portfolio is down another 7%, and that's a decline of $800 to my account. And overall, we're down about 43%, and that's a decline of $5,100 in my account since I first started it. If we look at the activity that's happening in my portfolio, we can see that I'm still receiving dividends from companies. Like BPY, I received $13.40. I received dividends from Hydro One of $2.42. And also I got some manual life dividends 560 and open text at 70 cents. With the $500 that I mentioned before in one of my previous videos, I actually bought a few more stocks. I bought Chartwell Retirement Center at $93.60. I put in $279 into Storage Vault Canada, and I bought $84.60 worth of Canada Goose. The reason why I bought Chartwell Retirement Center, and I know these retirement centers have recently been hit by the beer sickness. However, there's still a lot of baby boomers that are going to be entering these retirement homes in the next 10 to 20 years. So I think it is a good long-term investment and it pays at a great dividend. I bought more storage vault Canada because the stock has come down significantly from around $4 per share to $2.79 or so. And I believe that storage vault Canada will continue to consolidate the storage business in Canada and that more people as they're moving from larger houses into condos they're gonna need some place to store their stuff and Storage Vault Canada will benefit from this. And as usual, as I mentioned, I'm buying Canada Goose and so I've done so here as well. And I believe that Canada Goose is starting to open up their stores in China as China has allowed retailers to open up their doors again. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button as this really helps my channel out and helps promote my content to other people out there. And if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel as I continually reveal my portfolio and what I'm doing in it and show you the live trades that I'm making week to week. And if you're curious, is right now a good time to start investing in the market? Maybe you're an existing investor in the market and you have some cash on the side, or you're a new investor to the market and you want to start jumping into it. Consider watching this video over here as I share my thoughts on, is right now the right time to start putting money into the stock market? And will the stock market continue to drop? Keep up the grind and have a great day.